Hey everyone, pray you're doing well tonight. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm excited about my Lord and my Savior. I'm excited about His uh, return. I'm excited about my home going, your home going. We all have a place to go, isn't that awesome? Uh, take one breath and be in the presence of our, our Lord and Savior. So there's a great things, great things to be excited about, even though things around us um, doesn't look too good. I mean, just stick your head out the front door and look at all the smoke that is in our valley from all the forest fires that are here in California. Uh, our, uh, our location is one that when the smoke comes down, when the dirt comes down into our valley, uh, the mountains hold it in. And if we have uh, low pressure, uh, it just sort of pushes it to the ground. So uh, it doesn't look too clean outside, but praise God, we're clean on the inside. God has washed us and made us whole. And so there's always something to celebrate in our lives because we have Christ in us. Things don't look too well because of all the rioting that's going on and with the election that's going on and all the things that are stirring. It uh, may not look good, but hallelujah, we're called by his name. And so we need to rejoice that we have life in Christ Jesus. And that is a key, folks. It's a key for you and me to stay regenerated, to stay fresh in God, is that we have this great and awesome hope inside of us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, it should just cause us to uh, lift our hands in praise and adoration of a great and mighty God. And though he said we will go through persecution and there will be hard times in our lives, he will be there with us. He'll be there for us. And uh, he'll, he'll be the glory and the lifter of our heads. So let's just rejoice tonight in him. Let's rejoice every day in him and know that our God reigns. Amen. Well, a couple of quick announcements before we get into our word. Uh, for tonight, and that is this Saturday. We have our intersection prayer going to uh, continue, and we also have our food giveaway from 10 to 12. Intersection prayers at 9 a.m. in the morning here at the church. So uh, if you can make it to either one of those to get food or help pass out food, or if you want to go out and pray for, uh, for our nation and for the people of this nation, uh, I I'm praying they get saved. Praying people are turned to God. Amen. Uh, let's go out and pray for our leadership. Let's pray for God to move greatly because our God can do it. And uh, God wants to save people. That's evident. He wants to so bad he sent his son to die for each and every one who would believe in him. What an awesome promise. What an awesome God. So, uh, again, another reason to rejoice. Tonight's uh, message is, uh, Tis the Season. Well, you know, that, that phrase is used in uh, Christmas time. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Well, we need to understand what season we are in personally, what season we are in as a nation, what season we are in as a world, uh, and as, as a, a body of Christ in Christ. So it's important that we understand because if you don't understand what season you're in, you may miss your harvest. If uh, you don't recognize it's harvest time uh, in the natural and you don't go out and pick the trees, uh, the oranges and the apples and go into the vineyards. And if we don't do those things, we're going to uh, miss our harvest and we're going to miss what God is doing. If we don't know it's planting time, uh, we're not going to get a harvest because we're going to plant at the wrong time and our crop isn't going to develop. So we have to know when to plant and how, how, to, how to do that planting and uh, know then when that seed is going to produce in our lives. So it's important to know what season we're in. Amen. Uh, so you and I need to look around us and see personally, you know, what kind of season am I in? Again, in the natural, we can look at the weather. Today, a low pressure came in, called, caused some wind. And, but that low pressure, when I walked outside this morning, it was just like I knew that the, that the season had changed. 
we're going to be in the mid to low 90s. We're going to then be in the low, uh, mid and high 80s in a week to 10 days. Now, it may go back up again for a few days, but we can tell there's a turn. There's a season that changed. So we feel it in temperature. We, we feel it when, uh, when it's cold, when it's hot. We can tell sort of what season we're in. Uh, we can look and see if it's raining for us. Uh, our rainy season is during the winter. If you go to some countries uh, like India, uh, their rainy season is summer because that's when the monsoons come in. That's, that's when the heavy rains come. But they know that because they live there and they've sensed that. So they know, okay, the monsoon season is upon us. Uh, they know that summer is upon us, just like we know summer is upon us. And we can sense the changing in our weather. We know that when the wind blows, that things are happening and we can sense it. Like I said, this morning I could walk out and the breeze that was blowing was different than the breezes we've had this summer. And uh, you, just know, you just knew. But also we have to understand that the leaves change in the trees, the things around us begin to change. Begin to see noticeable change around us. Leaves begin to fall from trees and we're getting into that season and in the next few weeks we'll see the, the leaves starting to change and starting to drop to the ground. We're going to, uh, to see that harvest time is here. Again, it's pretty obvious to see an orange tree when it's in harvest because it's got all the oranges on it. But if we're not looking and we're not attentive, we're gonna miss it. So I wanna talk to you about the season in your life. One of the ways you can know spiritually what season you're in is have you been obedient? What? Obedient? Well, let's go to seed time and harvest. If you don't plant, you don't have a harvest. Many people are standing around waiting for a harvest to happen in their life. But Ecclesiastes tells us there's a time to plant and there's a time to reap. There's a time to sow and a time to harvest. He, he's, the word is very clear on this for all of us. If you haven't been planting, don't expect a harvest. But if you have been planting, you can expect your harvest. Then you have to just be aware and awake to the things around you to know when it's time to gather in that harvest. Just like we do in the natural, we can do in the spiritual. So it's important for us. Have I been obedient to God's word? For instance, you may say, well, we don't have many friends. Well, have you planted the seed of friendship? Have you went and talked to people, invited them for a cup of coffee? Have you, have you reached out to people so that people will respond? Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You say, have I, have, how, how am I going to reap other harvests in my life? Pray for the sick, that they shall be healed, and healing will flow to your body. The word of God is clear. That which we give shall be given back to us. We want mercy, we give mercy. We want God's grace in our lives, then we give grace to other people. When we are reviled, we revile not. We extend grace. We extend mercy. We'll reap a harvest of that. God's word is very true for us, and we need to stand in it. So you need to look at your life. Financially, are you giving? As God said, give the tithe to the church and give offerings to the church and to other ministries. Are you giving almsgiving to the poor, helping them? If you are, you can expect a harvest. It's just that simple, folks. Seed time and harvest. But now when you get to where we're at in time, as history goes, spiritually what is happening around us is a harvest, the taking out of the church, the, the coming of Jesus, is that soon upon us. How do we know what's happening around us? Well, we have to look for things that are changing. And again, I've been telling you for months, I hate to keep saying it, but uh, a low front coming in, wind and then a storm, a high front coming in, uh, a wind that is hot and dry, that dries everything up, and then the intense heat that destroys it. Setting up the things for the Antichrist to uh, set up his reign. Now, it's going to take, I think, four or five years for that to transpire. I'm not saying the world is ending. The world's not ending. I'm not saying commerce is going to stop. It's going to be drastically changed. The systems of our world are changing. 
For instance, the UN and the World Monetary Fund have been having meetings, and in January of this year, 2020, uh, they discussed how to go into a digital currency and to become a cashless society worldwide. Again, in uh, September 15th of this month, they're having another meeting, UN meeting. They'll be discussing that even further. And as I've been telling you, uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, other big banking institutions are all moving that way. Uh, again, you've already seen in the natural world, no change, uh, very little change being used. Uh, now they're starting to limit the amount of dollar bills that the banks are giving out to businesses because they want to take us and move us towards a digital one world currency. So folks, again, we see the plans starting to happen. So we have to be aware of tis the season. And I'm gonna to say to you, it's still the season to be jolly. Tis the season, things are changing and around us, but we have this hope in God that is so strong and so powerful that it will keep us in the joy of the Lord. Now, something else that is happening here in California on our November ballot is Prop 16. If you haven't looked at it, you need to get on your phone and ask about California Prop 16 uh, on the ballot for this year. It's to do away with Proposition uh, uh, 209, which was passed in 1996, which was the act that was added into our Constitution that the government could not discriminate against anyone because of sex, religion, ethnicity, whatever. It goes down all the list. You know what it is. Uh, it's affirmative action. Well, Prop 16 is to delete that so that now the state and government can discriminate against uh, people of, of certain race, of certain uh, ethnicity, of religion, of all the things that uh, should be equal. They're passing this to make it unequal that they can pick and choose who they will discriminate against. And guess what, folks? It'll most likely be the church. And uh, so, and, and people who do not agree with their, uh, with their uh, position politically, their political platform. So Proposition 16 is very big. And then we, of course, have the education proposition, which is our um, property taxes. And it's all to fund education, but they're gonna raise property taxes. I'm telling you, California is getting ready to be in a very desperate situation and uh, if God is leading you to move out, I would say, uh, you know, start looking because uh, things are getting, uh, going to be very tough in California. But for the Christian, again, tis the season. It's a season to keep our eyes on Christ. And that's what we talk about in the season of Christ Christmas is, you know, the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. And we have to keep doing that no matter what's going on around us because God is great and God is good. Now, as we consider these things, we need to see what God's word says about the hour that we're in. And in the word of God in Luke chapter 22 and verse uh, 52 and 53, it says this. It says, then Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple and the elders who had come to him, have you uh, come out uh, as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. The Lord literally said, this is your hour. It's your season to come against the Son of God. In other words, they're gonna have the right to do that. So folks, the, the church should not expect that God is gonna withhold persecution from us when he is allowing an hour to come, that time frame to come, that his son is going to be persecuted and put to death. So he says, this is your hour, and it's the hour of the power of darkness. The spiritual arena of darkness is going to do what it thinks is going to bring victory into their hands. And the word says, had they known, they never would have crucified the Lamb of Glory. Well, the same thing is happening in our world right now. The globalists are instituting a cashless society. They're instituting a new world order, even though uh, our president is fighting against that to be a, a nationalist and not a nationalist against anybody, just in favor of the United States and our sovereignty. 
and the globalists don't want that. And as I've told you about Agenda 21, they're exercising everything they can to get power through Agenda 21 back in their hands. And so uh, we have to look at the time that we are in, the season we're in. We don't lose our joy. We don't lose our strength. We don't lose our hope. In fact, these things are telling us that our greatest hope is on the horizon. Whether it's two weeks from now or ten years from now, the coming of the Lord is going to be soon. In relative of time, it's really soon. We're on the precipice of the coming of the Lord. So we hold our joy and our strength in Him. We count it all joy when we're persecuted for His name's sake. Again, we're not going to lose our hope or our joy when these things happen. But Jesus said to them, your hour has come. Do what you're going to do. And he declared that no one takes my life. I give it freely. Amen. Well, folks, we're going to give our lives to Christ freely. And if it causes us to be imprisoned or uh, to lose property or lose things in our lives, they didn't take it. We gave it because we would rather serve God than serve man. And so, folks, we're going to serve God with all of our hearts. You and I, everyone that's listening to this, that's going to live for Christ, we're going to give. Because we believe that our God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? But it's a spiritual thing. It's about knowing the season and knowing that God said persecution is going to come to the church in the last days. And so we reflect upon that and we rejoice. It is the season. Tis the season for the persecution of the church. It is the season that we're going to see things happen that we've never seen before. Things we're not going to like, but our God will see us through. He will give us wisdom and he will give us direction. So as we look at that, God has given an hour to the enemy in the last days. He says the enemy is going to rise up. He says the church is going to wax cold. He says the church is going to have all kinds of spiritual problems uh, in the book of Revelation. Amen? And the letters to the churches. But God comes into the church to solve those problems if the church will listen. He he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So even though God says that there's going to be a waxing cold and uh, that a great falling away is going to take place, there's also God is in the midst of his church to refine us, to, to set a fire in us, to cause us to rise up and see the season that we're in. It's not a season of depression. It's not a season of loss. It's a season of great gain as we respond to God and walk with God and allow our God to cleanse us, allow our God to strengthen us and use us during these last days. That is the whole key is What brings you joy? Is it serving God? If it's serving God and nothing else matters in this world, then you're in the right place. You have seen the season and you have prepared for it. Just like, you know, if you're living in Alaska and you know winter is coming and darkness is coming, you prepare for it. You have to have fresh water to make you through those months. You have to have meat put back for those months. You have to have the, the, the house you're living in or the whatever compound you're living in, you have to make sure it's leak-proof. You have to make sure that it can withstand the wind. It can withstand the heaviness of the snow. There's preparation. Well, if we know the season we're in, there's preparation. And so uh, I believe it's time for the preparation. As we have said many times and the Bible talks about, the bride uh, gets ready for the bridegroom and prepares herself, beautifies herself in the holiness of her God. So, tis the season. Tis the season to be excited and get ourselves ready, not only for his coming, but for his use in these last days. And thank God for all of you that are being used by the Lord today, uh, have already uh, committed your lives to that. That is, that is so awesome. I am excited about you and excited for you and excited in you because that's what it's going to take is all of us laying down our lives to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in our jobs everywhere we go. 
So it is, it is the season. Let's look at Luke chapter 12 and uh, see what the Word of God says about the coming or the hour of the Lord. In chapter 12, beginning in verse 39, it says, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. In other words, you may not expect it if you're not looking at the season. Amen. If we're not looking at the signs. Uh, the Word of God says, and we're going to read a scripture in Thessalonians, I have no need to write to you concerning the hour or the season of the return of Jesus Christ. We know he's coming as a thief in the night. So, God is already telling us, but he told us signs in Luke chapter 12, uh, 21, in, in Matthew uh, chapter 24. Uh, he told us many, many signs. Again, those are just some of them. Uh, throughout the book of Revelation, the, the Old Testament prophets. They've told us so many things to look for. And folks, we are, we are as I've been sharing with you, and I don't want to keep reiterating it and going over it, but the chip, uh, the cashless society, the globalist world, all of those things are in the making. Agenda 21, wanting to take away uh, beef from us. We eat too much beef, take away the grazing lands. It's already happening, folks, because they're breaking the supply chain, because they're making restaurants go under in the largest states of our nation where the most population is. And in the largest cities of our nation, the restaurants have been closed down. And they're only, if they are allowed, they're not allowed to go to full capacity. They're changing the habits of uh, the people. I told you, it's the greatest uh, move to change behavior of mankind that the world has ever seen. And yes, there's been generations that thought Jesus Christ was coming. When the plague broke out and uh, millions and millions and millions of people died, I'm sure they thought Jesus was returning. World War I, they thought Jesus was going to return. World War II, they thought Jesus was going to return. When Israel became a nation, they thought uh, uh, Jesus is going to return. It's been going on for a long time. Yes, it has. Paul thought he was coming back in his day. But we have to look for the signs of the time. And uh, there was things that were prophesied that could not be completed at any other time than our time. Every eye will watch the two prophets who are killed lay in the street for three days and then rise up. Can't do that without cell phones, satellites, communications that we have today. Weapons in the book of Revelation that a man will be, be hit with a weapon and his, his flesh will melt off his bones before his bones hit the ground. Never had that kind. We have it now. Nuclear, laser, so many things that are happening. 200 million man army coming across the Euphrates River. Never had that before, but China has a 200 million man army. Uh, Muslims have a 200 million man army when they join together. Things like this have never uh, been, uh, been happening before. Uh, so, yeah, we may, we may be looking at these things and missing the hour and the day, but we certainly know that we are entering a time in which the possibilities of the return of the Lord are very, very great. And I happen to believe in my heart that he is coming soon. And, uh, but I've been believing that since I was 13 years of age. Uh, because the Word of God says a man who believes that G the Im imminent return of Jesus is coming purifies himself, purges himself, and uh, we have to be ready. So the whole key to this is being ready. His key to this scripture in Luke chapter 12 is, Therefore you be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not know. He's coming at an hour that you don't know. So, folks, we're not going to know the hour. We're not going to know the day. We may not even know, quote, the actual season. But there's signs for us to watch for. And we need to interpret it correctly and walk in the life of God. Now, these fronts that I've been talking about, folks, again, it's not the end of the world. It's the preparation for the systems of the Antichrist to rise up. And I'm saying it's going to take four to five years for all those systems to be put in place and locked in in the governments of the world. 
and then the Antichrist could come immediately, or it may be a few years after that. I'm just saying the systems will be in place so that he can come. And it's gonna be drastic, the change that's going to happen in our lives, folks. Our lives have changed dramatically, and they're gonna to continue to change. Uh, just going to a cashless society is going to be a major event, and yet everyone already just about is living in a cashless society. We use debit cards. We use credit cards. Uh, even if you write a check, they just run it through their machine, give you your check back to you, and it's automatically deducted. It's just like a debit card. When you send your check in to pay your mortgage, they don't wait for that check to, to circulate back to your bank uh, in, in hard copy. That's all done wireless. That's all, uh, you know, it's all done on the internet. Boom, boom, boom. It's, it's there. So our world is changing. Some of it we're not going to notice. We're going to, people are going to be asleep. And that's why God tells us to wake up. Don't be asleep. Be awakened by the things of the living God and the things that are going on around you and the quickening of the Spirit of the Lord inside of you. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 1, says this, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. So he's saying, look, listen to this. When they're going to say peace and safety, when they're going to say peace and safety, then sudden terror is going to come as a woman beginning birth pains. This is the beginning of the birth pains. Well, folks, uh, we have, we have an election that's coming for our nation that's all about peace and safety. Lawlessness against law, bringing law and order back into our United States. So we're seeing some things that are happening. We've never seen the lawlessness like this, 1969, there were some things, but it's not matching anything that we're seeing right now. And I've been telling you, and I'm going to tell you again, whoever wins, there's going to be more violence, more problems. I believe President Trump will be reelected, but there's going to be more problems and more riots, more violence. And we have to be prepared for what's going to take place. And it says here that he comes as a thief in the night, but then it goes on to say this, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, the body of Christ, are not in the darkness so that that day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, it's not going to overtake you as a thief because you're able to read the signs that are happening around you. Tis the season. Folks, you may walk into a store in the next week or two and they've already got Christmas decorations up to be sold because tis the season. And the season is being shown all around us. And it's not Christmas yet. We're still three and, three and a half uh, months from Christmas. But we're going to start seeing the signs that Christmas is coming. That's in the natural. So is not God going to be as gracious to his people that we're going to see the signs of this, even though we're not in the season yet, even though we're not at that hour or that day, which we will not know which one it is, but will not God be gracious to us and let us see uh, what is happening and what is about to happen, what is coming our way? to see if we want to purchase it or not. And the reason I say that, folks, is because there's ten virgins in, in Matthew, and five are filled with the Holy Spirit. They have enough oil, and five don't. And uh, they come back and ask the five that have, and say, can you, uh, can you give us some of your oil? And the people that have it have to tell them, you'll have to go and get it from those who sell it. Well, folks, God is, God is not selling his word, but do you want to purchase it? But what do I mean by that? Does the word cost something? Well, it does in this sense. You have to believe it, you have to receive it, and you have to act upon it 
which changes your life. It may change your own personal will for your life. It may change your own personal desires for your life. That's why God said, count the cost before you start building the house. Amen? He wants you to understand the cost. Salvation is free, but transformation is something that may cost your flesh and your carnal mind because it has to be renewed. It has to be changed. It has to forsake the old and put on the new. So God is speaking to us, wanting us to walk in the power of his life. He says, you are the sons of light and, and not of the night nor of darkness. You are sons of the, of the light and of the day. What happens in the light and of the day? You can see. You can see. I'm going to say it again. You can see. So, if you're out on the desert and it's calm where you're at, but you see the huge dust cloud forming, you can see that there is wind stirring up dust coming for you so you can prepare to hide from that dust storm. In the day, you can see the storm that's coming so you can prepare for it. I've been telling you, the coronavirus was this first wind and it was telling us the storm is coming and we need to get prepared for the storm and not drop our guard and say, oh, a vaccine is almost here. Everything's going to be okay. It's not. Vaccine may come and coronavirus may be gone, but the breaking and the weakening of the systems has already been done. The work that the enemy planned has been done and the storm will come to complete some of that work, to bring more destruction to systems as we know it. So we have to understand. Now, in the last days, it says there will be pestilence. We're watching that. It's going to say earthquakes. Folks, we're, get ready. I believe we're going to see some greater earthquakes hit the United States and other major populous areas of the world. I believe we're going to get to be able to see these things happening. It's part of the storm that's going to break our systems. The enemy's going to use everything he can. So we need to be able to say, I'm a son of the light and I'm a son of the day. Or for you women, your daughters. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord says that this day should not overtake you as a thief. In other words, you can see the storm coming. You can see what's happening. It is the season of preparation for what is about to come. And when we are prepared, what happens? We're able to be sustained, uplifted, needs met. God is glorified. Our praise goes up. Hallelujah. God's protection is there. But if we are not prepared, he will come as a thief in the night. Now, again, I'm going to relate this to what I've been talking about, the two weather fronts coming in. I'm not saying Jesus is coming within this time. I don't know. I think he's coming soon, but I don't know that he's coming in this time. But I do know that systems are going to be broken, unfixable, dried up, changed dramatically with this first front and storm that comes in. Then it's going to intensify. The battles are going to intensify with the second front that comes in. And it's literally going to be, if you will, set on fire of hell. The intense heat that the Lord talked about as he shared this with me. Again, you may not want to believe what I'm sharing with you, that God shared this with me. Uh, but folks, I can only be obedient to God, to share what God showed me. Uh, it's up to you to look at Scripture. It's up to you to study the Word of God, to see if it even makes sense to you. To me, it makes tremendous sense. I, I look into the Scriptures every day. It's being confirmed over and over and over again. The season is upon us. And we need to be ready. Hurricane season comes. And where do they look for hurricane season? Off the coast of Africa. That's where the storms 
begin to form and they come across the Atlantic and they intensify as they get into the warmer water coming towards the United States. And so the hurricane season is developed uh, from a far off distance, but they can look at it and say, wow, we have three systems that are forming in the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to track them, we're going to watch them, we're going to plot how they're moving, the speed, we're going to, to send our planes into the middle of them to, to get their uh, speed of wind uh, and their barometric pressure. We're going, to, we're going to track it because it's harmful. Well, church, we're not children of the night. We're children of the day. We should be looking for these storms not because we are afraid and not because uh, we're just looking for bad things, but we should be aware of what is happening around us so we can prepare and help others prepare for the things that are coming, spiritually, physically, every area of their life. Because, folks, we are a triune person, spirit, soul, and body. We have to be prepared in every area of our life if we want to sustain uh, what God has given us. And uh, I know that we can trust in God, have absolute faith in God, but I also know God is a respecter of faith. He's not a respecter of men. He's a respecter of faith. And faith without works is dead. So we have to put our part into this walk with God. In fact, if you're walking with God, it means you are walking with God. Not God just coming walking with you and you doing nothing. You are walking with God in His planned steps for your life. He goes on to say, We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Sleep means to be unaware. It means to be totally unconscious to the things that are happening around us. When we're sleeping, uh, I don't know what's going on. A uh, mouse could be trickling out uh, uh, in my house, you know. I don't think so. I hope not. But he could be there. I, a burglar could be looking at my house from the outside trying to decide if he wants to come in. I don't know. But I do know this. I have cameras set up, an alarm set up. Why? To warn me, to let me know if something is happening. Folks, again, we have to be aware. He says, do not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. It's not talking about drinking and not drinking. It means be diligent, be focused, as I taught on Sunday, be focused to what is happening around you. Be focused on what is going on uh, in your life, around your life, in this world. Because if you just duck your head and put it in the sand, the enemy is going to take you by surprise. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drink, drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, and whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So the word of the Lord tells us to be awake, to be sober. Don't be, you know, it says that in the end days, men will be drunk on the world, caught up in the things of the world. Well, folks, we don't want to be caught up in the things of the world, what we can have, what we can enjoy. We need to be caught up in him, sober-minded towards the things of God, excited about God, listening to God, following God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then in verse 14, it says this, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, uh, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursues what is good, both for yourselves and for all. While all this chaos is going on around us, God doesn't want us to get unruly. He doesn't want us to join the fray. He wants us to conduct ourselves as the children of the Most High God, still loving, still praying, still giving, but well aware of what's around us, well aware of what's going on, and be prepared in your life, spiritually. Be prepared that the enemy does not come and take you, come into your house as a thief in the night. Amen. That Jesus 
comes to take us, but we are children of the day and of the light. I don't want Jesus to come as a thief in my life. Now, if he comes as a thief in my life and I get to go to heaven, okay, so be it. But I want to be aware of what's going on because I'm a soldier. I'm supposed to be a watchman on the wall. A watchman on the wall would sound the shofar when the enemy was coming. He would also sound off what was happening in, this, in the streets of the city. He would also sound off for the celebrations of the nation or of the city. We need to be watchmen doing our jobs. We need to be fully awake unto God. We know that this is the season for great persecution to come against the church. Again, on Sunday, I told you that Franklin Graham, uh, you know, believes with all of his heart that this is an outright, full-out uh, move to uh, shut the church down in the United States and worldwide. Because if it goes down here, it'll go down everywhere. Uh, but folks, the enemy doesn't understand something. You're not going to shut down the church. You're going to shut down the systems of the church, how we operate now. It'll change. In China, they went underground. We may have to go underground. I don't know. But folks, things are going to change, and we need to be prepared for it. Again, folks, as we look at this word, Jesus said there was an hour for darkness, and the rulers of that day, spiritual wickedness that wanted to come against him, they would be given an hour. And that hour would be to take the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and uh, to punish him, to judge him, to condemn him, and then to take him to the cross and crucify him. But God also had an hour, because Jesus said, but for this hour have I come. That, that he was going to raise from the dead, he would suffer death, raise from the dead, and give eternal life to all those who would receive him. Well, folks, I believe as we look at the life of Christ, we also can look at the life of the church. And as we look at what happened to him, I believe the enemy is going to be given time to come against the church. The word of God talks about it. There's going to be great persecution against the church. The church has been under persecution since it was birthed. There's going to be a time with persecution. The enemy is going to rise up. The Antichrist is going to make war against the saints, the word of God says. I, I pray that we're out of here by then. But folks, the Word of God says that that's going to be intensifying, working up to it. Because, uh, again, in Luke 21, where I read from you, uh, if you go and read Luke 21, it says the pestilence, the earthquakes, all that's going to happen. But before this happens, they shall take you into court and persecute you. So before this stuff really intensifies, the church is going to become the enemy of the state. Prop 16, folks. Really, California. They used to and still can't discriminate against us. If that bill, if that proposition passes, they'll be able to come against individual groups, individual people, discriminate, treat them different than they treat anybody else. Well, folks, if we look at the progressive movement and what it's saying, Christianity is the problem. Conservatives are the problem. Uh, anyone who will not obey their uh, dictates are the problem. And they say freedom of speech, but if you say anything against what they believe and say what you believe, there's no more freedom of speech. You can't say that. that that's wrong. That's, that's hate crime. That's this. I look for the church, if this thing passes, uh, that the church is going to be persecuted because there will be no more protection in California. The federal laws will still protect us, but the state will push the envelope as much as they can to come against us. So folks, we're looking at this. We're, we're looking at the, the state's uh, financial problems. All the major Democratic grand states, financial problems, they're gonna have to raise taxes. Again, I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, taxes are gonna raise, you need to realize that. And if you wanna pay the taxes, fine. That's up to you. That's between you and them. But folks, what we're seeing is a collapse of our systems as we know it, and this withholding of coronavirus is withholding so many things. They're using it to dictate to get Agenda 21 um, completed and Agenda 30 well on its way. So folks, again, we need to be a prepared people, spirit, soul, and body. 
So on September, uh, let's see, what is it? September 26th, it's a Saturday. At one o'clock, I'm gonna be having that class on preparation for physical, financial, uh, spiritual preparation uh, for the times we're getting re ready to come in. It'll be here at the church. Uh, we'll be, of course, wearing masks, uh, social distancing, uh, and so, but we're gonna be going over things that you need to do, uh, things that God has led me to do and uh, others to do, to get ready for what is coming. So hope you'll be here on the 26th at one o'clock. It'll be after our intersection prayer and after the food giveaway, I think is on that Saturday. And then one o'clock we will uh, have our class. So uh, just get prepared for what is coming, spirit, soul, and body because it is the season. And it is the season to be jolly, for our God is with us. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Go in the peace, the grace, the mercy of God, and we'll see you soon, hopefully Sunday morning at 9 a.m. God bless.